Today in Homemade Science, we're going to look at an update of the mysterious wandering balls. Now this experiment starts with this plastic sheet. In this case it's polycarbonate, but other types of plastic will work. And I've made a nice box for it to sit on top of. Now we can do this easier if we use cardboard or, or as we'll see, aluminum foil. But the heart of this demonstration are these pith balls. They were purchased from a science supply company and they're very cheap. And we'll put them in the box here and put the plastic on top. And look what happens. They start bouncing around. And if I rub my hand over the box, we'll see these balls bounce around inside the box. So what's causing them to move? When I rub the lid, I'm actually creating a static charge. When I look at the triboelectric series, I see that my hand or furs actually become positively charged by giving up electrons. The lid, on the other hand, becomes negatively charged by gaining electrons. We know that like charges repel each other. Positive charges repel positive charges, negative charges repel negative charges, and opposite charges attract. Initially, the plastic sheet and the balls inside are neutral. But as I rub my arm on that plastic, a negative charge builds up on the lid. The balls then change positions with the negative charges trying to stay away from the plastic while the positive charge on the ball is attracted to the plastic. When I bring my hand near the surface, it disturbs the charge, causing the balls to move. Now let's try this once more. This time I want to put a couple of the balls on top of the sheet and see what happens. Now let me charge up the sheet. I'll drop the ball on it. There we go. Now watch what happens. The ball just dances around the surface whenever I get near it. Now let's try a simpler version. I made a box out of aluminum foil. Get it straightened out here. I'm going to use these four blocks to hold the plastic up. Put these in the corners. There we go. Let's put the balls inside and put the plastic sheet on top. And I'm going to rub it with my wrist. And once again, we see the same type of behavior. Now, quite often I get asked, what if you can't find the styrofoam balls or the graphite paint? Is there some alternative we can use? And their answer is yes, there is. Here's some very small styrofoam balls that were removed from a stuffed toy. You do want to keep this between the two sheets of plastic. If it gets outside of it, it gets very hard to pick up. Larger foam balls are readily available, and instead of painting them with a the graphite paint, I'm going to wrap them in aluminum foil. You want aluminum foil that's as thin as possible. Tear off any excess. There we go. And simply roll it between your hands to make it tight. Now let's go give this a try. Here's another simple setup. The plastic's on top of two wood slats. I'm going to rub it with my arm to give it a charge. That should be good. Let's try it. They seem to work pretty good. Now we started with these smallest ones, but we have two inch, we have two and a half inch, we have three inch, and we even have a four inch. Now we're gonna switch over to a larger piece of plastic. This is 18 by 24, and it's also a quarter inch, so it's gonna make it a little bit more sturdy. As my hand gets nearer or touches the ball, there's actually a small spark between the two. 
It doesn't hurt at all, and if you listen closely, you can actually hear it. To keep the balls from rolling off, I made bumpers out of masking tape. I used wide tape and I fold the edges down to keep the balls from sticking to it.